What's up y'all, it's your girl EJ and welcome back to my channel. Now today we're gonna be doing our first impression over the Max original entitled The Idol. Now this show does follow pop star Jocelyn. She basically had a nervous breakdown, it derailed her career. She's determined to claim her rightful status as the greatest and sexiest pop star in America. Now her passions are gonna be reignited when she meets Tedros. He's a nightclub impresario with a sordid past. Now will her romantic awakening take her to glorious new heights or the deepest darkest depths of her soul y'all so this show is deep it's dark it's interesting and it can be triggering so if that's not your vibe then you may not want to check this show out but we're going to talk about episode one in this video now when we meet the pop star jocelyn she is gearing up for her new album release now she's doing her album cover of course she wants it to be sexy so you already know she got on this little red thing her nipples are exposed her her booty is halfway out. I mean, Jocelyn says she ain't coming to play with them, but she has an intimacy coordinator. And y'all, I promise you, I didn't even know that intimacy coordinators existed until now. And he says, hey, you can't do that. You can't show your areola because it's in a clause in your nudity contract. And she's not feeling this at all, of course. So he tells them like, look, we can get it out, but it takes 48 hours. Now they are paying for all of these other things that's going on, this photo shoot, all this stuff is going on. And there's no way they can redo any of this because it wouldn't make sense financially. So you already know it already starts out with a issue right from the jump. Now, meanwhile, while all of this is happening, Destiny is going to come in. Now, Destiny, I am assuming is probably more than likely her PR person. And when she comes and she's just like, look, I need to speak to you, Haim. And she's just like sh straight business. Now, Haim is also another very important member of the team. And then we're also going to meet Leah, who happens to be her assistant and her closest friend. Now, Destiny's going to show them a photo on a phone. And they're like, what is that? And then, uh, you know, we're going to learn that your girl Jocelyn was in a very compromising position. She's on her knees, a selfie's being taken, but the most important important part is that there is cum all over her face and someone has posted this on the internet so you already know this is not going to be good for her so they got to figure out a way and you know do some damage control now, Haim, who is actually Jocelyn's manager, is going to end up blocking the intimacy coordinator up while they finish up the photo shoot. We are also going to meet a couple of more people. We're going to meet Andrew Finkelstein. He is a guy from Live Nation. We're going to meet Talia Hirsch. She is there to interview her for Vanity Fair. We are going to meet uh, Xander Benjamin. These are all people that are on her team as well. We're also going to meet Diane, who is a dancer, and her and Jocelyn seem to be very, very cool. Now, everybody seems to be trying to manage this situation, but it is becoming increasingly clear to Jocelyn that something is definitely wrong. Now, with everybody watching her, uh, you're going to see that Jocelyn is trying to fake it. You can tell that there is still a lot going on with her and that she's just not all the way there. You know, we are going to find out that, of course, she has lost her mom and that this this is definitely something that is weighing on her and you can tell that she is doing that fake it till you make it thing now we're going to see that andrew is going to be like hey you know we're going to spend the story as revenge porn and benjamin is just like okay like like really is that true and he's like no but you know that's what we're going to say now when they actually get around to telling jocelyn about it she just kind of says look it could be worse so she kind of took it in stride like it wasn't anything now when they get to talking about the book Kakas and all this stuff. I don't even know if I said that right. I was just like, y'all doing too much. I mean, they was really out there. But anyway, we are going to see that this really is affecting her and she just wants to go dancing. She's going to ask her uh, friend Diane, who happens to be the dancer that I was talking about earlier. She's like, what was that club that you were talking about? And so they're going to end up going to the club and they're going to be drinking, dancing, paparazzis, all that kind of stuff. But this is when we're going to be introduced to old Tedros, y'all. Now, Tedros is going to be the club owner and he's going to see Josh there and he's definitely going to make his move at that point saying all these little cute things like oh look there's Jocelyn she's this that and the other I mean Tedros is definitely um uh, something else you know I mean he is definitely making sure that everybody is feeling good up in this club I mean if I was up in the club I would be like dang like 
you know, Tedros is making you feel like this is where you need to be. He's just like, look, you know, this is the church. This is the place for all the sinners. And I'm just like, okay, I see you, Tedros. Now, anyway, y'all, when Tedros, um, you know, he's going to hit on her and he's going to say, hey, you know, can't we dance or whatever? And so they're going to end up dancing. And next thing you know, they're going to be end up tonguing each other down out there on the dance floor. I was like, dang, that was fast. Y'all went from zero to 100 real, real quick. So, you know, but there's that. So anyway, we're also going to see that they're going to somehow end up making it into the stairwell and Tedros is going to hit her with this line. Oh, before they actually get into the stairwell, uh, Tedros hit her with another line and he's like, he was like, you know, I can see how anyone could fall in love with you. And I'm just like, dang, Tedros is pouring it on thick. And then Joss is all like, well, I don't even know you. And I'm just like, girl, I, I don't trust nobody with no rat tail. Like, come on now. So anyway, y'all, uh, we're going to see that Leah is at the bar trying to get some water. She's not drinking, of course. You know, she has to be the clear-headed person. And we're going to see somebody watching her. There's going to be somebody. He has like a tattoo on his head and he's sitting over there in the corner and he's watching. He kind of gives a nod to somebody. Not sure who he did the nod to, but somehow or another, Jocelyn and Tedros are going to end up in a stairwell, y'all. And I'm just like, oh, okay. And she tells him like, look, I've never screwed anybody with a rat tail before. <laughs> That was so funny to me. So anyway, we're going to see that uh, Leah is going to start looking for uh, Jocelyn. She's just running around looking for her, calling her name. And they're up in the stairwell laughing. And, you know, they're kind of trying to get to know each other. And you can see in this moment that Joss is really falling for this guy. She really likes this guy that she just met. And it's just an interesting situation to see how this all played out. Now, we are going to uh, see that your girl Leah is also going to find a little somebody that she's going to run into. She's going to run into this tall, dark dude with uh, blonde hair. And she just couldn't say no. She got mesmerized and forgot that she was even looking for Jocelyn. And then they start dancing and doing, doing their thing. And then we're going to see that Joss is going to make it back home, y'all. And when Joss actually makes it back home, your girl is a super freak. You know what I'm saying? She like, she she's super freak. You know, the kind you don't take come to mama. You know what I mean? And your girl starts doing her thing you know, her me, myself, and I thing, but she choking herself while she doing it. And I'm like, okay, Joss, I see you. So anyway, y'all, that was a whole scene. Now, I did forget to tell y'all about the conversation that they had in that stairwell, because that was a pretty interesting conversation when they talk about music and stuff like that. And when he tells her that she has like the best job in the world and he talks about pop music and he says that pop music is, you know, basically like the ultimate Trojan horse. You know, you can get people to dance and sing along with it and then boom, you know, which he definitely had a point with that. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that back up about how they did go into musical conversations. So anyway, y'all, uh, the next day we're going to see that Joss has to do the interview with Talia, who is the chick from Vanity Fair. Now she is trying to connect with her and trying to get Joss to kind of let her guard down, but Joss just isn't having it. She's kind of acting really hard and acting like this really isn't affecting her. The fact that that picture has come out, you know, and she just tells her like, look, you know, I've been doing this long enough to know that, you know, you basically don't give a statement. And that it's just a hustle. So she's not going to give her a statement. And although Talia does try to be real with her, she's just like, she ain't trying to hear it. And she just wants to do business and business only. Now, later, we are going to see that Joss and Leah are going to be having a conversation. And she's going to be like, look, I don't even like this song. Like, what is this song even about? And Leah's like, it's a really good song. It's a good dance song. You know, it's what's going to get the people going. But she feels like she should be doing something else. And I mean, and this isn't what she wants to do. So... Uh, we see a real moment between these two and we see that they really are good friends. And like I was saying before, at least I thought I said it, it's going to be really hard for Leah to maintain a best friend relationship with her and also be the person who is supposed to keep her grounded, her assistant. Uh, it's going to, it's just going to be a tricky situation. So anyway, y'all. Uh, we're going to see that Joss is like, look, I think I want to invite Tedros over. I think I want him, you know, to come by. And she's like, the dude with the rat tail. <laughs> she, just, she says that he gives her these rapey vibes. And she's like, that's that's what I like about him. And I'm like, wait a minute, Joss. Now, come on now. Come on. Y'all, Joss is a freak for real. I mean, she really is. 
So anywho, guys, uh, Jocelyn is going to end up inviting Tedros over. Leah's going to let him in and she's still not feeling his vibe, y'all. But when he comes in, you can tell that something is off with him. Like something has been off with this dude from the moment that we met him. He comes in and he feels like he's casing the joint. He's looking up at the cameras and stuff. And Leah's just like has this cringy look on her face as she kind of watches him, even though she tells him to make himself at home. Now we're going to see your girl Jocelyn is getting ready for this little rendezvous with him and Jocelyn didn't play no games y'all Jocelyn is like forget this I'm about to come down in this red robe she ain't got no bra on as normal because you know your girl for some reason she she just don't like to wear the bra you know so she got that on she got these heels on like Jocelyn didn't come over for Tedros to talk is all I'm gonna say so anyway, y'all, uh, we're going to see that Tatros is uh, going to be a little more ugh, icky. He's going to end up smelling the pillow and Leah sees him. And then he's going to go into the bathroom. He's going to snort a little bit of cocaine, you know, a little coke. And then we're going to see him practicing in the mirror saying, hello, angel, like he needs to practice it. I'm just like, dude, something is so off with him. And Jocelyn is just so hurt and heartbroken and just so damaged right now she can't even see it y'all I feel like this is about to get real real crazy so anyway Joss is gonna come down the stairs you know they're gonna have some drinks and then Leah's gonna let her know like look you got to be up at seven in the morning and then Jocelyn is going to want him to listen to her song and she's going to take him in the room. They're going to listen to the song. He's going to be like, you know, uh, I think it's good, you know, but Jocelyn is like, nah, you don't like it. Now he's like, I think it's good. But he was like, but, you know, it doesn't feel like you really feel the song. He said it feels fake. You know, it doesn't feel like you really can screw because basically the song I mean literally the song is about a freak y'all like that's what the song is about and I'm like Jocelyn you all of these things from what we've seen so far I don't understand why you can't sing this song like you believe it because from what I see it's everything that you are at this moment but you know no hey I'm just saying that's that's what Jocelyn been doing she's a little freak freak so he tells her that she has to stop caring about what other people think. And then next thing you know, he got this ice cube. He running it down her leg. And I'm like, oh, oh wait a minute. What, 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 what's going on? And then next thing you know, he tells her to stand up. Um, and then he pulls her robe over her head. And then, you know, he ties it up really tight. And, you know, Jocelyn liked to be choked. So I was like, okay, this right up her alley. Hope he ain't crazy. All I could think about was criminal minds because, you know, I look at a lot of criminal minds and, you know, like this ain't what celebrities should be doing with no strangers, you know, stranger danger. And next thing you know, you know, she kind of like she can't breathe. And then he's like, you know, trust me. And then he takes out a knife and he cuts a hole open. And then finally she can breathe. I'm like, good. Thank God he didn't slit her throat or something. This was crazy. So anyway, he's like, now you can sing. And that's how this episode ends, y'all. So I mean, it was a lot. It's going to be deep. It's going to be dark. It's going to be interesting, y'all. So we are definitely going to be talking about this show. We are actually going to probably talk about this show more live than having videos about it. Because I feel like it just needs a conversation around it. So I'll definitely uh, more than likely be going live on I didn't get the conversation started down below. Let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Is this a good show? Did it meet your expectations? Is it too dark? Is it, you know, just doing too much? Let me know what you think because I know that the show is extremely controversial right now. You can see it all over the internet that everybody has an opinion about it. So I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Now guys, if you like this video, make sure to go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to your girl channel. Turn on your notifications so that you do not miss out on any of my my future idol talks meanwhile guys youtube says that you just might like this video next so go ahead and take a look until next time guys peace